our situations to either become, as Helma put, more interesting or to have consequences that give us a sense of, uh, even though they weren't inevitable, they feel in retrospect as if they were inevitable, right? It, that, that we say, oh, that makes sense, right? That it turns out that way. And um, therefore, when we introduce these randomized or uncertain mechanics of any kind, what, what I think is what we're struggling with is that sometimes they either land us in just cognitive, you know, confusion. Sometimes they land us in uh, negotiations that we really don't need at the moment. The last thing we need at the moment is negotiations and options. So sometimes they land us in just a moment of cognitive helplessness, you know, uh, a, a bad moment for your brain. Other times they land you in negotiation. Other times they land you in trivia. And other times they land you in the position of full stop. You know, it, you, you can't proceed unless this happens. And so what I think I want to talk about is that when we have a resolution it's intimately related to what we came for it's intimately related to we want play to move forward no matter what and we want to have uh you know, consequences, no matter what. Here's, here's a problem with the full stop. For example, what if the game mechanics have gory fatality for your character, and yet it is also part of the assumption of play that our band of allies will forge against the dark, forge away against the Dark Lord over the long haul of play. These are incompatible. You can't have the band of adventurers becoming closer and closer and closer as interactive characters and have this one get taken out by a goblin. Now, And you've got Warhammer with its fate points. Right. Well, then you have means by which you dodge around the contradiction, but in many cases they're patch rules. Right? And so it's, it's very tricky. Uh, how do you talk about this? then someone else can come along and say, well, this character fatality is part of play. Have the character's clone step from behind the tree and keep playing. It's okay, right? And then, you know, whether that's good or bad, you know, it's, it's interesting. So what I'm driving at is we need to back up and look at the facts that in different games, what consequences are, outcomes are, is different for different games and that if you don't have resolutions that feed into those and provide constraints for what you get to say next if you don't have that if the roles turn out to be trivial if the roles turn out to be simply contradictory to that and so then we find ways to fudge around them or just introduce another variable like a resource that blunts them which in my opinion is very unsatisfying. You know, why have the resolution do things you don't want and then give me points to say that doesn't happen? That's annoying. Um, that's my problem with fate. Yeah, well, that's fate yes. takes that in such a direction that mm -hmm. I will go into a patented rant. But in the, um, <laughs> yeah, but go ahead. In Blades in the Dark, uh, author says it's by design. It's he says something like, we are talking about dire consequences of the characters. And if they resist, we know like, oh, they, they looked like into the consequence in the face and the, they, uh, and they laugh and they go uh, further. So it's, it's um, the yeah. goal was that it's vivid. The, the possibility of, of failure is vivid. 
and you, then you could do something but, about it. Well, you see, that's the interesting question. Lorenzo the text, has already... I think the text to say... Yeah. Go ahead, Lorenzo. Sorry. No, you go ahead. No, no, I was reacting because I think the text is say something like, you can narrate it as something terrible now, and then later it shows that uh, it wasn't so bad, so basically. Right. That, that's, that's the message. No, that's how the mechanism works. I don't find, it it's, very, it's I don't find that very compelling, personally. No, me neither. Me neither. Um, it's, this, yeah, go this ahead, is what Fence says. Like, you can say, oh, it seems like a dislocated shoulder um, or something and then if it's not a failure then maybe it wasn't something really bad that well this is so kind of interesting bad. it goes this my experience with this idea goes back to robin law's text for hero wars as it was called at the time i always have to say that and um and something i found extremely compelling and i actually adopted aspects of it and it actually goes all the way back back to over the edge um, I forget the details in each case, but the idea was is that you took a lot of damage in the middle of combat. Mm -hmm. And it always mm -hmm. looked like that amount of damage in terms of tissue and stress and stuff like that. But at the end of combat, you often ended up with less damage than you actually took. And so the idea was that in the middle of the conflict, you felt like it was going worse than it actually would, ultimately. So yes. that therefore the grimacing and the agony and the looking at the blood on your hand, you know, and you got shot, but you you think you got shot fatally. But as it turns out, it's not that bad. Now you can do this kind of cartoony like action movies where, you know, the taking the bullet basically means nothing afterward or you can play it just a little more dramatically in that you know so you were supposed to narrate during the fight instead of saying your ribs are broken you say you're sure your ribs are broken hmm. you know, instead of instead of, so all narrations were very much from the subjective traumatized position of the player character's own sensations but it was also known to everybody at the table that unless you took an extra super amount of that, that it wouldn't turn out that bad. You could, of course, end up taking enough that you were killed instantly, or that you're, you know, you were too badly traumatized and you were going to be, you know, killed or horribly injured at the end. But that your character would feel it as worse than it was. That the some of the damage was going to clear. And um, and because it wasn't that bad, so I kind I actually really enjoyed that in Hero Wars, and there are similar rules in Sorcerer, which were inspired by Over the Edge, so that you feel horrible, and then at the end you end up being a little less worse off than that implied at the time. Um, and so I actually get that, but in both of those games, it was in fact possible to get horribly injured or killed too. Mm -hmm. So are you, I mean, so in a way if blades in the dark has this same principle in action, but it's pretty much guaranteed that no, you're not going to be horribly injured or killed no matter what that seems, well, I don't know. That's up to the game. I mean, there's other aspects to the game that they <laughs> combine. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think Alexandra actually had to go at that point. We we kept her right beyond the point of departure. So anyway, um, speaking of points of departure, we are past the two hour mark. So I think maybe we'll let it sit for further dissection based on anything we managed to say or not say. Um, mm -hmm. But clearly, I mean, this is these are deep waters and there are hundreds and hundreds of different games with different spins or takes or consequences on these things um but it is fascinating that by and large historically pound for pound text for text throughout role playing the tendency has been to, at least in terms of advice to the players to the people using this game except for recently the text historically has been oh just blow past failure if it messes things up ignore it and that's not really very strong design. Or or maybe embrace it in case of things like Call of Cthulhu or... Right. 
where where maybe where it happens that your whole party goes insane before you get to the end of the of the story. Right, right. That's um, that that's you have to sort of buy that as something that can happen. Yeah. Um, so anyway, though, uh, final thoughts from anyone before we go. I would like to see uh, a discussion, um, either video or on uh, at a play about experiences of failure that were really right on and they felt they felt appropriate and what the context and and thinking was that produced right. that effect you mentioned to me yourself that the burning out of endurance and you know pushing your endurance and knocking yourself out through that final effort in champions it's glorious when it succeeds and it's <laughs> glorious when it doesn't right Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. You got to have, you know, Sal Basima has to draw the, and you know, the 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 agonized oh. failure, right, <laughs> of the of the hero at that moment, um, and so yeah. yeah, that's that's certainly an example that comes to my mind. Um, but anyway, uh, Alex, any last thoughts on some of this? No, it's just interesting to listen to. Well, sometimes. Um, <laughs> one thing which is sort sort of beside what we're talking about was things like uh, it wasn't mentioned was gumshoe which sidesteps the whole investigation role f f fumbling failing but that's not another story i guess yeah no, well, it's worth pointing it out as something that can be followed yeah. we can follow up on that um i think the insight with gumshoe is that we're not here to watch the investigation fail Yep. Right. We're we're here to see other things yeah. go wrong. Right? Other things happen or go wrong, or maybe it was very well, but that's not the point. The point is to the story moves forward and right. the application I, works. I should also, in terms of yet more investigative games, also bring up inspectors, which when played properly, there is no preparation for the situation. There are only things that the characters investigate, and what's true or not actually depends on you're actually rolling for the truth or falsehood of what they are seeking to understand. So the actual backstory takes shape through the successes and failures. So failure, and also since failure often involves a certain amount of slapstick, being wrong, if the character is literally wrong, meaning they do fail, but they're actually establishing the truth or falsehood of those facts that were under investigation as well so in a way you're not just rolling for truth and falsehood you're also stressing out your character as you fail as well because you take stress on those failures so um so that's a very interesting example in in inspectors you have competence and stress at work but you also are establishing you know content um, mm -hmm. Lorenzo, did you have any final thoughts or? Well, I think it's really complex issue and it spirals into so many things. Exactly. I mean, we're going to have to chop it up, uh, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. So somehow, and I think one avenue to explore is uh, we touched on this, but I think it will be useful to create. I'm not going to say a taxonomy, but like some idea between the difference between failure that. Uh, uh, brings the game to a full stop mm -hmm. and failure that you can successfully integrate it produces new effects because I think that when we describe failures but we it has often to do still be failure is the difficult part we're not yeah exactly about dodging failure no 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 it's this it has failure. to be and and I and I think it's it's going eventually this discussion is going to lead uh, to what is what what's interesting about the results be, de be them positive or negative i think at some point i was mentioning this before the most interesting interesting texts i can think of uh, in rpg terms spend very very little describing success and in a way that's natural but i think there is some sort of hidden lesson there uh, it's uh, uh, we want to be surprised somehow and since we set up to do something and we want to say Yes, uh, uh, success isn't surprising. So in a way, right. failure is more interesting. You just need to embrace it somehow. 
Right, right. Uh, so final. That sounds like you and Helma are, are echoing each other in this one. <laughs> yeah. So Helma, do you want to let that stand as a me too? And yeah. Yes, and it was interesting to listen to you. Yeah. yeah. Everybody. No, there's yeah, thank a you. lot to, to go over. I'm looking forward to dissecting this out further. I can't believe we've never done this over the last two decades, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much, as usual. Good night. Good night. See you. Yeah. Good night. Good night.